These are the 45 presidents of the United States. And today we're going to find out which ones history forgot. Now, before we start, I should probably tell you that there aren't 45 presidents. There are 44. This is because Grover Cleveland served two non-consecutive terms, and for some reason he's just always been marked twice. You should also know that we're only talking about official presidents, selected by the nation, state presidents, and rebellion leaders don't count. And the last thing you should know is that this isn't based on political views, laws they passed, or anything of that nature. I wouldn't even call it a popularity contest, it's simply presidents people don't remember. And that's it. We're gonna start by getting rid of the last five. Everyone should know them because most of us lived through them. So Donald Trump, Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, and George H. W. Bush. Next, we're gonna get rid of the notable ones. Harry L. Roediger and K. Andrew DeSoto aren't presidents, but in 2014, they published a study in the magazine Science about the popularity of presidents. We're gonna reference this a lot, so keep it in mind. Something they found was that presidents who were in office for a major event like a war, whether it be good or bad for their image, tend to be remembered far better than a president who was just average. Take JFK for example. He served as president for only three years, but was tragically assassinated by Lee Harvey Oswald, who acted alone with a Kakano rifle. Or, at least that's what they want you to think. Maybe the conspiracy theories have kept Kennedy in the news for 50 years. It surely would make sense. After all, James Garfield and William McKinley were assassinated, but you hear more about a lasagna-loving cat. Even then, a 2009 study showed only 86% of college students could name JFK, to which I say, Seriously? College students. Our best and brightest. Come on! Alright, I got a little sidetracked there. Here are the notable ones. Ronald Reagan, Jimmy Carter, Richard Nixon, JFK, FDR, Teddy Roosevelt, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, and George Washington. This brings our total to 29. 29 is also the percentage of Americans over the age of 55, and assuming they all voted on the first presidential election they were eligible for, and everyone since, that would mean they all cast a ballot in 1988. However, the average adult can remember things back to when they were 7 so Gerald Ford is out. If you really want to dive deeper, we can go by the oldest living person, Kane Tanaka of Japan, who was born on the 2nd of January, 1903, making her 116 years old. But she's Japanese and therefore unlikely to remember. So let's go with the oldest living American, Elia Murphy, who was born on the 6th of July, 1905, making her 113 at the time of recording. She's old enough to possibly remember William Howard Taft and everyone that came along after him. So Lyndon B. Johnson, Dwight D. Eisenhower, Harry Truman, Herbert Hoover, Calvin Coolidge, Warren Harding, Woodrow Wilson, and William Howard Taft. Now would be a good time to tell you about my favorite president, Zachary Taylor. He's not my favorite for what he did. Uh, if I'm being perfectly honest, I don't know what he did, nor do I care. But what I do know about is his death. It's the 4th of July, 1850. We're in Washington, D.C., and the weather can only be described as very hot and humid. Zachary Taylor has spent the last several hours outside doing a fundraising event for the Washington Monument. And when he returns to the White House, he decides to cool off with copious amounts of cherries and freezed milk. Apparently, his doctor told him to stop eating them, but he didn't. For the next few days, he experienced severe stomach pains, and then he died. It's believed gastroenteritis killed him, but it's also possible he died from cholera, which was very prevalent during the 1850s. Okay, let's conclude story time. Now on to the Bills. Ulysses S. Grant and Andrew Jackson. They're on the 50 and 20 respectively, and depending on your profession, you might come across them every day. Remember Harry L. Rodiger and K. Andrew DeSoto? Let's have them help us out a bit. These are the four presidents only 10% of Americans can remember. Chester A. Arthur, Mallard Fillmore, Franklin Pierce, Rutherford B. Hayes. If they were bank robbers, I like to think they'd be called the White House Four, a group of highly skilled individuals who have managed to evade the history books for almost two centuries, hardened by time, feeding off the decay of memory. But we want to find number one. Who's the guy everyone forgot? Well, according to Time Magazine, it's Chester A. Arthur. This is based on, you guessed it, the study by Rodiger and DeSoto. According to them, only 6.7% of Americans remember him. This is also corroborated by the fact that he appears in almost every recent publication. So, I think we're gonna have to give the title to him. Poor guy. Just look at him. Sitting there, getting his portrait done. Totally oblivious to his legacy. 
or lack thereof. But that's why he was forgotten. A quick Google search shows that he's best remembered for assuming the presidency after James Garfield was assassinated. That's all it says. Of course, with a little more research, it turns out that he was a pretty good guy. He started his career as a lawyer in New York and once represented Lizzie Jennings, an African American who was told she couldn't ride the streetcar. After winning the case, New York made laws against discrimination on public transport. Among other things, Chester signed the Pendleton Act, wanted slaves to be free, vetoed the first Chinese Exclusion Act, appointed the Tariff Commission, and strongly advocated for tax cuts. He also redecorated the White House. Here are some more things that happened while he was president. The United States recognized Korean independence, the Brooklyn Bridge was opened, and the Washington Monument was dedicated. Many historians believe he did a pretty good job, and he's often referred to as a man of the people. Unfortunately, this doesn't hold up too well in the history books, and he held office over 150 years ago. You see, Chester wasn't president during a major event. There's also the fact that he was never actually elected to any government office, and decided not to run for re-election after finding out he had kidney disease, which he eventually died from two years later. All these factors probably contribute to his lack of legacy. Anyway, I hope you learned something today. Um, if 30 million people watch this video, Chester Arthur will no longer be the most forgotten president. So share it with all your friends, and as always, thanks for watching.